All right, guys, thank you for tuning back in to Cold Pizza Watch Reviews. Today, we're going to be talking about two Bulova hacks and which one's right for you. So stay tuned. All right, guys, welcome back. Today, we're talking about the two types of Bulova hacks that you can buy. I'm holding the standard issue ivory dial. So I've already done a review on this and I'll post a link to that in the description below but briefly to go over these specifications you've got a 38 millimeter case diameter you've got a 13.45 case height you got a 47 millimeter lug to lug distance here you've got a 18 millimeter lug width you've got a double domed mineral crystal screw down case back signed crown. I've replaced the NATO strap that comes on this model with a standard leather band. I don't care for the NATO. It tends to make the watch wear really high. So that being said, while I've been wearing this watch for about 10 days, it's a much more standard wearing watch. It's a put it on. You don't feel like it's a dressy watch. If you're going out to go for a run, jeans and t-shirt, shorts, whatever your daily activity is going to be. This is more of a catch-all based on its design and my feeling when I'm wearing this watch. See there. The difference is it does wear considerably bigger than the A11, and we'll show some pictures of that here in a second. Okay, I've got the ivory dial on here, and you can see that even though it's a 47 lug-to-lug, -lug, my wrists are just over six and a quarter. It does push the end of the wearability for me on either side of my wrist. Like you do see some of my wrists, but that's pushing it for me. That said, I think you can pull it off if you do have smaller wrists, but it is a bigger wearing watch. It wears closer to a 39 or a 40. And that has to do with this surface area of the dial. It pushes out almost to the edge of the case, which causes it to wear large. So if you've got larger wrist, that's good for you. If you're smaller wristed like I am, then you're gonna say, well, this does wear bigger than a 38. Just getting that across to you as I've had this on the wrist and I've noticed it, it's one of the larger wearing 38s I own. And I own several. Uh, my Certinas are similar in the way that they wear. So it is a big wearing 38. Just to let you know, if you're entertaining one of these, you got a small wrist and you're looking at 38 millimeter watches, this standard bull of a hack does wear large. But that said, it's not going to cause me to get rid of it. It works and I think you can pull it off. But again, the whole point of this video is to let you know how these two watches wear. There you go. It's comfortable and I enjoy it. I haven't had a problem with the way it's feeling on my wrist. But again, I'm right at six and a quarter. If this helps any of you out, it is a larger wearing case. But I've loved the dial and the way that it looks while I've been wearing it. It's really enjoyable. This is keeping up. It's better on accuracy than the A11. I think this watch has been close to four to five seconds a day. It's awesome. So that's, that's how it looks on the wrist. And I'm gonna put the A11 on and we can do a comparison. Okay, now I'm holding the A11 blue dial and I'm gonna go over the specifications for this watch as well. There is a review that I will put in the description below that goes into more detail. But quickly, this is a 37 millimeter case versus the 38 on the standard ivory dial. You've got a 45 lug to lug with these turn down lugs. You've got a 14 millimeter case height, a little bit taller than the standard ivory dial. You've got the 18 millimeter lug width. Again, you've got this domed crystal. You've got what they report a 50 meter water resist screw down case back, cool case back that I like. So those are the general specifications 
and we're going to put the A11 on and you'll see how it wears differently than the Iverdial. All right, back here with the A11. You can see here with this 45 millimeter lug to lug makes quite a bit difference on my six and a quarter inch wrist. Not saying that both don't work, but I'm just giving you my opinion on when I put both these watches on, which one feels the best. I plan on keeping both of them and I love wearing both of them, but I'm just giving you my perception. So you see how that looks. The one thing with the A11 is it's a little bit top heavy. If you leave it on a NATO strap, it does like to spin around your wrist. It's just a high wearing small little watch. But that said, it's very versatile. It is more dressy, but I wear it all day. Doesn't matter what I'm doing if I'm going outside just to mess around or dress it up or dress it down. Both these watches can do that. The ivory dial is a little more utility oriented based on my wearing of it. But if you've got small wrist and you're entertaining 38, 37 millimeter, the 37A11 is the better wearing for me. Just let you know. This helps you out. Now I'm gonna take these off and I'm gonna take the straps off and show the cases side by side to give you a little bit better uh, opinion on how they look. So hold tight. Okay, we've got the straps removed and you can see the backs of these watches. You can see the ivory dial on the left. The lugs are much more pronounced versus the A11. They're much smaller and they seem to just disappear while you're wearing the watch. I like showing the back because it kind of gives you an idea of how it is going to lay on your wrist. So again, look how big they are on the ivory dial versus the A11. Nothing wrong with that if it's what you're looking for, but this should give you an idea on the wearability. Also, the A11 having those smaller lugs makes it more of a dressier watch, whereas on the ivory dial, you've got a little more sporty aspect to it having those big lugs. All right, now we've got these facing dial up to give us a good overview on how they're gonna be wearing. If you notice, you can see the thickness of the lugs. See how they almost disappear on the A11. They're more pronounced on the ivory dial. You've got a smaller crown on the A11. You've got a much larger prominent crown on the ivory dial. Notice that you're only going from 37 to 38 millimeter and you see such a size difference. Part of that is because look at this dial and how much larger it is, the surface area, versus the surface area on the A11. You're only going from 37 to 38. It almost looks like you're going from a 38 to a 40. So to let you know how they're gonna wear, that 38 is a large wearing watch. This 37 is almost like a 36. Very interesting on how dial size can play a difference in the wearability and the appearance of the watch. Also, those lug to lugs going from 45 to 47 makes a big difference. The one thing that I like is these are both 18 millimeter lug widths, so I can change my straps in and out on them. So that was something that I thought was cool about it. Again, both have the same movement, both have the same crystal, Stainless steel, hand-windable, hackable movements. All right, now we've got both watches at a side view to give you an idea of the case height. So on the left, the ivory dial, you're at 13.45 millimeter. And then on the right, you got the A11 that's at 14 millimeter. Doesn't look to be that huge, almost appears to be more prominent on the ivory dial because of its length and those thick lugs. You see how those lugs come on out? They seem to stretch that case height on out where the A11 keeps it small and tight even though it is a tall wearing watch. I notice it more on the ivory dial as far as the case height versus the case height of the A11 even though it is a taller wearing watch. Just again, the wearability and once you have it on your wrist and the way it feels. So I'm gonna flip them around and we'll go to the uh, crown side here in a second. 
All right, now we're on the crown side. Again, you've got the ivory dial at 13.45 on the left. You've got the A11 at 14 millimeters on the right. And if someone was to ask you, hey, which one's the taller watch? You'd think it's the ivory dial, just looking at the way they rest on this uh, little pillow here. Just, just showing you the perspective of while I'm wearing them, this is what I've noticed. Not that they both don't work, but look at how much bigger that ivory dial wears. You've got that big crown, prominent lugs. Look at the smaller crown on the A11, the smaller diminutive turn down lugs on the A11. So we'll go from there and we'll do one more dial side up and wrap this little comparison up. Okay, we've got both these side by side and really in conclusion, it's a toss up. Both of these, it's hard for me to choose which one if I had to keep one. I think the ivory dial is just amazing looking to look at. The hands are so well executed. The quality of the dial. The blue dial, A11, it has the history. It has the awesome engraving on the back. It's a great wearing watch on my wrist. While both of them do wear great, I don't know that there's one that I would get rid of. It's going to be a personal choice up to you which one you like. I just wanted to put that out there. When you're debating 38, 37 millimeter watches, some can wear really large that I've learned over my 30 years of watch collecting, and some can wear really small. So if you've got any other questions that you want me to answer about how these are wearing, or if you own one, what you've thought about it, leave them in the comments below. And as always, I appreciate you tuning in to Cold Pizza Watch Reviews.